This is the Cal One on One podcast on Cape Atlantic Live. Here's your host, Nick Costco. It's Cal One on One podcast right here on Cape Atlantic Live, presented by Omer's Appliance Service. I'm your host, Nick Costco. With me is Mainland Girls head coach Scott Betts. And coach, thanks for joining me. I appreciate the time. Uh, you know, you guys are going into a state semifinal this week after winning the South Jersey Group Three title over Absagami been quite a run for your girls this year just first of all congratulations on the win uh tell me a little bit about the game and the win over Absagami as they made their Cinderella run to the final in limbo but obviously you guys are were the uh the, le- the, the last team standing there and uh, took it to them on Saturday yeah you know um this is interesting running into you know common opponents several times throughout the year um you know it's just it's just funny there's only a couple of group three schools in the Cape Atlantic League but it's just feels like we always end up running into them uh, in the South Jersey playoffs, whether it be Absagami or Ocean City over the years. Um, we actually played Absagami in the uh, quarterfinal round of the Cal tournament, too, so that was our fourth time having played them. So um, it can be tough you know, over and over again, but um, especially when they've got, in my opinion, one of the best scorers in all of South Jersey and Reese Downey, who just has the potential to just go crazy. So I was happy with the way we executed, um, kind of took care of business, and it was – uh, probably our best start to finish performance against them out of the four. So I was, was happy that we uh, executed that one in the South Jersey final. You mentioned that you played them now four times this year. Go, you know, and again, when you play them in a Cal tournament, which is basically a playoff atmosphere, then you play them in the actual playoffs because they were a six seed. They made their run to the final. You just mentioned a little bit of the challenges of yeah. playing a team like that that you're so familiar with over the years and obviously with playing them now a fourth time here in 2024. Did you – what, wait, what was the message to your team at that point, knowing that, you know, we've beaten them three times before, but this fourth time, I mean, did you anticipate it to be a little bit more challenging than maybe the third or second time you played them? You know, uh, I think that kind of cuts both ways. Like on one hand, we, you know, staff and I try to communicate to the kids that one game has absolutely nothing to do with the next. Um, you know, you don't get to carry over a 17 point win. You don't start up 17 points in the next game that starts. Um, and on the other hand, you know, people were asking a lot about this, um, even getting back to the Cal final against Wild Catholic, you know, like, oh, what do you think? It's hard to beat the same team over and over again. And, you know, there's something to that. But on the other end, I'd much rather be on the side that we're on where, you know, you're going to that game having one, you know, two or three in a row, uh, as opposed to, you know, going into a game like that, like, man, we're really having a hard time figuring this team out. So uh, I'll, I'll take the, uh, the mental advantage that comes with, you know, being on the winning end of those games. Let's go back a little bit to the sectional semifinal. You guys played at Cherry Hill West. They came into Linwood. It was a very competitive game. At one point, you guys were down by nine. So maybe a little bit of adversity. Again, you guys have only lost one game all season long, 29-1 and one now. I look at that game, and that was the one game where at least I thought from up in the booth that, wow, you guys are really challenged here. But I saw a little bit something different from your team where now you're on the, the, on the trailing end of things and pulled off that comeback, especially in the second half. Did something click in the halftime locker room of that game? Because Cherry Hill West really took it to you guys early on, and obviously they, they did build that lead. But it seems like you guys springboarded from that second half of that game and obviously through the South Jersey final as well against Absagami. Yeah, um, yeah. I wish it was. I could say it was something You know, at halftime. Uh, we came out of half, we made a little run, but then they, they made another run right after that, and we actually got ourselves back down and had to take another time out. And that was the first time that I was you know, really kind of uh, – you know, getting concerned uh, at that game because I just have so much faith in our kids. Um, but then, you know, I think honestly the difference was we just started playing defense the way that, you know, we expect to um, up to our standard. And between that and Casey was just a different animal, particularly late in that game. So, um, you know, our kids, they make plays, they battle. Like they, I, I really believe they have the mental edge in pretty much every game they play and that they expect to win. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, a ton of credit to Cherry Hill. Like, they came out, they made shots. Uh, we kind of challenged some of their secondary kids to make shots in the first quarter, and they did. Um, and, you know, high school basketball, they had good guards. You know, any team that's got good guards, like we've, we've been blessed with for the past couple of years, um, they're going to make it tough. So, you know, it was a, a combination of factors. But um, I also thought we were, we were we weren't really executing an offense in the first half. We were kind of settling for bad shots, which was getting Cherry Hill running, which is typically our game. Um, so once we kind of flipped the script on that, I, everything kind of turned in our favor. When you look at the team you have, again, you have a very senior heavy lineup, very similar to the mainland boys team. And I asked head coach Dan Williams about this too, about the championship mentality of your team. 
you're no, you, you mean you and your program are no stranger to South Jersey success, winning sectional titles and advancing in the state playoffs coming, coming off of last year, then going into this year. And I asked it to coach Williams and how he said, you know, they, they bounced back from that tough semifinal loss and they knew that they, they would have to face similar teams in order to get to where they are now, now playing for a state semifinal. Did you guys feel the same way knowing that the result of last year compared to this year, we're now, you're maybe taking it a step further here with these girls that are now a year older in their careers and and have that experience in playoff uh, atmospheres. So, you know, I, I think the starting point for all of that was um, the way last season ended uh, was kind of a springboard into everything we did in the off season and then start this year. Like, I, you know, it's, it's not, I know it's kind of cliche, it's kind of coach speak, but it's also built in reality. Those kids expect to win every time. And so, you know, losing the way that we did in that South Jersey final last year, like it, like hurt, like it, it took a, a, a significant toll on all of us. And, um, you know, fortunately, I think we were just able to kind of turn that around and use that as motivation, you know, for, you know, we, we never wanted to feel like that again. Um, as far as moving forward in the state tournament, you know, I think the same thing applies. Like these kids just expect to battle and compete with everybody. Obviously, you know, kind of our message to the kids uh, after the Cherry Hill game was that it's supposed to be hard. You know, we kind of cruised through our first two rounds of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. we, we had some, um, you know, favorable matchups because of our seed. But the whole point of all this is that it's supposed to be a challenge. Otherwise, it wouldn't mean anything. It wouldn't be special. It wouldn't have any, uh, you know, any kind of impact if you didn't have to kind of scratch and claw for it. So I think that's what we expect moving forward. But, you know, I think that, you know, we've got a mental edge that we expect to compete with everybody all the time. You mentioned that mental edge and having to scratch and claw your way to a win. And I know you alluded to Wildwood Catholic earlier in that uh, Cal tournament final. That game seemed like it was one of the, the closer games you played all year. And Wildwood Catholic obviously brought a fight. It was a very competitive game. Did your girls lean back on an experience like that? Because, it, again, it was, it was it was recent memory. It was, it was within the last two weeks of your South Jersey final. So when you look back on that game, it's like, all right, when we play Cherry Hill West and we're down by nine, We've been in these competitive environments before, but you know we have the home floor here. We're, you know we are the number one seed. We have expectations. Did they rely on games like that throughout the years? Again, you guys have cruised, as you mentioned before, through a lot of your games. Obviously, through the playoffs and through the Cal tournament, you had the favorable seating because of your record and your dominance this year. But did, did, did you and your girls look back on games like that and say, "All right, that that you know we did X, Y, and Z, so let's try to do that again in this game." I, to a degree, you know, I think that um, I don't. I don't think it's necessarily a specific game, but I think it's just the uh, the potential of play that they know they're capable of when it comes to you know tournament atmospheres or big game atmospheres, and that they know that they're capable of playing at a really high level. So it's not necessarily one specific game, whether it's a Cal title or anything else. Um, that you know, they just kind of it, like I said, just the expectation, just like what we you know the standard that we hold ourselves to. And, and I will say this, like. Uh, the thing that was kind of remarkable with that Cherry Hill West game is that, you know, through all those timeouts, even the second half we were down, there was no panic. There was no one was overreacting. It wasn't overly emotional. It was just like, OK, what's next? What's next? Um, and then you know, they just kind of kept buying into little adjustments here and there. And then, you know, the plays just kind of presented themselves for them. So I, I don't I don't know if it's a specific one game shot, one game sample that does it for them so much as just their body of work and that like, you know, our, our schedule was pretty tough this year. We played a bunch of teams ranked in the, you know, uh, top 20 in the state. Mm -hmm. um, we play in a, in a really loaded Christmas tournament. Um, we played tough road games and like all oh, that's just designed to put you in a better position to go win in the playoffs. So I think that it's just kind of uh, more of a composite of everything than anyone one outing. What can you say about the collection of talent that you have? And, you know, you've had, you've had talent. We, I mean, we talked earlier in the year and throughout the season how, your talent just keeps it seems like it just reloads with you and your program year to year but you have you know the, the major twins and then of course casey bretonis all thousand point scores on your team including bella getting it in the cal tournament uh just a few weeks ago does knowing that you can rely on a trio like that and you know that's not to mention you know sydney stokes and uh, ava sheer and to round out your starting five as well one of the best in, in south jersey if not in the entire state does it does it make you almost feel more comfortable like like, like you mentioned before with uh cherry hill west really not much panic even though you're down by nine because you have talent like that is that pretty much the greatest collection of talent you can, you can remember uh during your time as head coach it's hard to say like you know this is kind of one of the questions that people ask a lot like well how about this team compared to this team you know like 
Um, obviously, like you said, we've been blessed with some pretty special kids over the years, Kylie Watson's and, you know, an all American in high school. And, um, you know, uh, Cameron Dirks was, you know, <laughs> one of the better players that, you know, didn't go on to play college basketball. I could ever think of in my coaching experience in the mind team or anybody else. Um, so, you know, obviously, you know, any coach will tell you that having talented teams help, like that's, uh, that's kind of the name of the game. Um, and, you know, the, the thing about this group that stands out is that, um, I mean, obviously they came in and, and, and could play, but like, man, the, like if, if you're really paying attention to it, the level of development that went on there too, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it, I'll take a kid on either end of the spectrum. So like Sid Stokes, for example, mm-hmm. uh, came in and was, you know, a, 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 a bench player for freshman year, sophomore year. She was in the mix when we made the run of the state tournament, but she was like our seventh or eighth. Uh, come off the bench and then just the leaps and bounds that she made, you know, to her game to develop, to be, you know, she's one of the better, you know, post options in the area now. Um, and then even Casey, who, you know, was, you know, going to be, uh, I imagine a favorite to be like, you know, player of the year for a lot of people. Um, but like the, the level of development that went into her game too. Um, she kind of came in as a kid who would like, scrappy and you know get to loose balls and defend for us and then to be with like starting from there to become this you know primary ball handler best defender and you know primary scorer in a a lot of games there's just so much work that goes into that the Mazers too you know like um so you know it's obviously a talent thing but I think to 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 describe it purely as that almost hides the amount of work that the kids put into it to, to make themselves what they are now do you feel that, that trickles down? I'm curious because you, you have a shorter rotation, usually maybe just one girl off the bench and a Riley Nagel's a freshman. She comes off the bench and then everybody that I've seen that plays, you know, those other rotational minutes when applicable for you guys, they're all freshmen. There's some sophomores. So it's very, it's very young behind your starting lineup. So do you feel that, that those, all those developmental traits kind of trickle down to your younger players that could build upon what this team is doing this year? Uh, for sure. Just in a number of ways. It's um, like I said, just the standard, the expectation of like, you know, what we, what we want me in the basketball to look like, but then also like being a freshman and going out there and just getting your, your, your brains beat in every now and then, because these kids are just, you know, they're just so overwhelming at times. Um, but then also just being able to sit and learn as a freshman without necessarily being thrown to the fire. I think there's value to, to that as well. Mm-hmm. Um and, you know, it's a process. Like, I, I think, you know, people, I think you even used the phrase earlier, people think we just reload. It, it, it doesn't really work that way. You know, like it, it, it takes time and, you know, we got to figure out the right fit with like where each, what, what this kid's good at and where she wants to score and what, you know, what kind of, um, you know, what kind of offense is going to best suit that. There's a, there's a learning process to all that primarily for myself. Yeah. Um, and so, and there's going to be a, there's going to be, you know, a, a learning curve for all that, particularly next year. I think also, you know, looking at kind of um, the groups that have come in, at least my experience at Mainland over the years, uh, when you get one deep group in one class, I think what happens is at the at the lower level grades, at the grade school level, I think a deep class like that can chase kids away from basketball, either a grade ahead or a grade below, mm-hmm. um, because they're just like, oh, that's that's the basketball girls, and they're really good at it, so I'll go play something else. So right. uh, that's kind of what we run into. Like we have, we have this loaded senior class, and then um, Ava Sheeran's the only junior that you know that got uh, varsity minutes for us this year. Um, but then, you know, kind of on the other end of that, we have this really deep freshman class now. And right. like I said, it's going to take some time to develop them too. But, uh, you know, it's, you know, obviously we benefit from the community that we live in that really values basketball and continues to teach and, you know, provide us with good players. So looking ahead to Wednesday, and of course, Mainland Girls head coach Scott Betts with me here on a Cal one on one. You're playing Ewing in the Group 3 state semifinals. So two wins away from a state championship. Uh, I believe the state championship for Group 3 is up at RWJ Barnabas Center in Toms River. So that is the end goal here in 2024 for you guys. Uh, first impressions of Ewing, uh, how do they play? How do they stack up? How do you guys match up against them? Uh, it seems like you've, again, you, I, I've seen you guys both at this point scratch and claw to wins, dominate and run away for, uh, some, for uh, some wins this year. Uh, what's your initial impressions of Ewing on Wednesday? So uh, I don't know if that's ironically or kind of fittingly. It's actually it's a it's a rematch of the you know, 2022 state semifinal mm-hmm. um, when we had Cam Dirks and Caitlin Boggs, the seniors on that team. It was Mainland versus Ewing in that team, and uh, I don't know. It's kind of fitting because a lot of the kids playing on Wednesday were central players in that game two years ago. Um, all of our seniors and and all of theirs were sophomores. Who were like their sophomores were kind of the focal point for that team. 
Um, both teams have kind of kept their core for the most part in place, and it kind of felt like this was inevitable. We 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 let down our end of the bargain last year. We would have we would have played them again last year. Hmm. Uh, they of course won the state championship last year. So, um, you know, they're, they're super talented. Uh, like I said before, anytime you have guards in high school basketball, it's going to be you're, you're going to be competitive, and they have several who can really play. Um, they've got you know scholarship talent all over the court, um, and you know it's it's good. It'll be a, a monumental challenge, but. Like I said, uh, I think the, the mentality of our kids is that they expect to compete all the time. Doesn't mean we're not always going to win every single game, but um, they're going to give it everything they got for sure. I'll leave you here with this one, Coach. When you look at the run that you guys have been on, what the mainland boys have done, and I, I actually did not pose this to Coach Williams. It was mostly about how they fed off a lot of their football guys feeding off from, from a state championship in the mm -hmm. fall. But I saw the celebration between your team and their team after Saturday sectional final wins. Of course, you guys – Ended up dominating Absagami at that point. The boys win an epic three or uh, triple overtime game, and then everyone's celebrating on the floor on, on the floor together. Is it almost more special? And I, I know you guys are focused on your run and your run only, but it, you, can, you can only you can't help but look at over what the boys are doing as well. Does it make it a little bit more special knowing that both teams are doing this at the same time and could very well win state titles in the same exact season with loaded senior classes? I mean, there's no doubt. It's um, yeah. <laughs> We were uh, talking we, we, afterwards, uh, the boys team, the girls team, the coaches, all of us were all out and uh, Charlie's after the game to celebrate together and uh, all kind of reminiscing about the Cal championship double mm -hmm. that we won in, back in you know 22 and just what a fun day that was. And then, uh, you know, people were like, well, how's this one compare? We're like, well, obviously you know, <laughs> we keep going now, you know, you got a state championship on the line. So, um, but there's, it's just special for so many reasons. The kids are all friends, obviously. Um, you know, the, the, we see them all in the hallway and everyone's just, you know, giving, wishing each other luck and high fives, coach, or, you know, me to the boys. And um, for me personally, it was, I mean, I was just so over the moon, uh, just excited and, and happy for Coach Williams because, um, you know, he's just been so supportive, you know, for me, at, you know, in the girls' role. And I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but. Um, the year before we, we both became head coach in the same year, the year before that we were both assistants on the girl staff together. We, we, we were all on the same girl staff and he put in for the boys job at the same time I put in for the girls job and we got it. And it just felt like, I don't know, like our careers, our career paths were just kind of linked along the way. And, um, just to, to ha watch him and his staff have that moment the other day. Uh, I mean, no one deserves it more. I, I was just so happy for them. And obviously, you know, uh, for our own program, it, I was happy for our girls, but for me personally, it was just an overwhelming sense of relief. Felt like I can like, you know, go to sleep now because uh, it's kind of haunting me for the last 12 months. So uh, I get to feel better about it now. I can only imagine. Well, coach, good luck on Wednesday in the state semifinals against the Ewing. And then we'll, we'll see. Maybe maybe there is another doubleheader uh, up in Tom's River for uh, you and the boys trying to get uh, state titles here in 2024. So appreciate the time and good luck on Wednesday. All right. Thanks, bud. Appreciate the coverage as always. Absolutely. Mainland head coach Scott Benson with me right here on Cal one-on-one. -on -one.